Hello all, this is an introduction to the R1 2023 version of ANSYS Form. In just a few minutes, we will be exploring everything you need to know about ANSYS Form, the new modernized interface for the transient nonlinear solver, LS Dyna. We will be going through some of the basic features of the software, in addition to running through an example to really showcase what ANSYS Form is capable of. To start with, let's begin a new project. Under the Process tab, hit New Project, and this will open up a menu with some file customization options. Here you can select your project title, directory location, forming type, and unit system. Once we've initialized our file, we can use the Process tab production line option to start building our simulation model. Here we can define the steel flow direction and pitch distance. But ANSYS Form also empowers you to dictate the pace and precision of your simulation. Picture a simulation tailored to your preferences and capabilities. Fast, accurate, or even very accurate for Springback. Going over the next few tabs briefly, the Tips tab gives you the authority to shape tipping information using user-defined systems. The Operations tab is the main tab where you will be defining your forming process. And through the Advanced tab, ANSYS Form even offers trim line development. Going back to the Process Operations tab, we can define our process by breaking it down into operations. To add or remove an operation is simple. If we add a complicated part, using the plus, we can add a trim operation, then maybe a flange operation. If we misadd or misorder a process, we can redefine them using the drop-down menu, or using right-click contextual menu. For our example, we will only have one draw stage, so to remove our additional stages, we will simply hit the minus options. Once we've defined our operation, next let's define our blank. After navigating to the blank upper tab, which should be an underlined red, we can import blank information using the import option. You can import a blank as a surface, curve, point, coordinate system, or miscellaneous. Using miscellaneous, we can import some legacy files, such as Dyna or Nastran. For our example, we will be using a curve. Under the curve option, simply hit the plus and select your curve file. Once we've imported our blank, we can see the shape in our preview window on the right. When we close this import window, we can now define our curve using the red select box. In our case, it's by curve, so we'll make sure the option is selected, then pick the curve using the window on the right. You can see on the left, we have to choose if we are picking an outline or an inner hole. In this case, it's an outline, so we'll select the set option under outlines. Now if we select the red apply option, we can auto mesh the curve. Just by observing the mesh, it is evident that the mesh doesn't necessarily follow the curve. For situations like this, we can expand the Mesh Options tab and adjust the element size to be similar. In this case, let's reduce our element size from 16 to 6. To view the elements, we go to the top right under the Style tab and select this Rubik's Cube-like option to turn on the mesh. ANSYS Form enables inexperienced and experienced modelers, where we can create a model without ever seeing a mesh, but for our more experienced users, the ability to fine-tune meshes is accessible. After closing out of our blank defining window, now we have our blank mesh, as you can see by a green highlight. We still need to define the material though, as you can see by a red highlight. To define a material, we can select the material option. You can import the material as a Dyn input file using the blue import folder option. Or alternatively, you can use ANSYS forming library. We are going to select material 37 from the ANSYS forming library under Various Steels and DQSK. By double-clicking the material, we can view and edit all the material information, such as the density and the Young's modulus. To evaluate the result for post-processing, we will need to provide the FLD information. To do this, we check Agree and hit Copy and Assign. Then re-enter the project materials, select the material, and finally set the FLD method supplying necessary information. We can select from Thrice and Krupp or Keeler formulas, or use a user-defined FLD curve. For our example, let's use Keeler. For Keeler, a n value and reference thickness will be required. We will be using 0.23 for n, and use the reference thickness of 0.69. After defining our method, we will quickly apply and hit save and assign but now we need to define our blank material thickness of 0.69. To do this, we simply enter our fourth entry box, and we can directly adjust our blank thickness value. 
Additional blank information, such as friction coefficient for the tool, blank symmetry, and blank constraints can be defined here. Now that our blank information has been defined, we can proceed to the red underlined operations tab. But we only have one stage in the process tab, so we can see we only have operation D10. Exploring this operation, we can see our tool configuration. The default setup is single action, with two tools below the blank and one tool above the blank. For our case, we will want double action, so we'll use the Setup drop-down menu to select this option. Additional options include importing your own template for non-standard setups. If additional tools and phases are needed, they can be added using the Plus Tool drop-down. When adding additional tool, it can easily be dragged above or under the blank and other tools as necessary. When adding a phase, the full tool motion can be defined. To delete any unnecessary tools, we can simply right-click Delete. For our case, we only have three tools and two stages. Now that we have our desired configuration, we still need to define the tooling design data. Any red text you see still needs to be addressed. Now we will import and add the surfaces for the die. Using the tree menu, we can turn off the blank and blank curve so that we can focus on the die surface. Using the view panel, we can adjust to a more comfortable isometric view. For the punch, the punch is the center service area. To define it, after closing this menu, we will select punch, use the red select box, select all to choose all shown areas, then use the exclude checkbox to unselect these two side surfaces. After hitting apply, we'll have our punch. For defining our binder, the process is very similar. Click binder, hit select, then choose only the two side surfaces and apply. Finally, to define our die, we will hide our punch on binder, then select all, as the rest of the displayed surfaces can become our die. Now that these tools are defined, we can select the red highlighted gear in the top left corner to define our tool offset. We need to specify if the tool is already offset or define our offset parameters. In our case, we're going to define the offset of the upper tool. By default, it is one blank thickness. Make sure to hit Apply and Close. We can further define the boundary conditions of the binder during the whole process. By selecting the Close to Die block, you can define the force by using the Force Control checkbox. We can also define pins and draw beads under the Accessories tab. Spring Back Analysis options are also defined here. Using the Positioning button, you can check tool motion. We can simply hit the Play button or even run through the individual frames. If things look good, we're ready to submit the job by selecting the Runner option. In this menu, simply select the Draw stage and then hit Start. ANSYS Forming comes with four cores of Elastina. If you're using one core in a modern environment, it's simply too slow. If you want to check on the current status of your job, you can access this icon. It should be titled Job Manager. This is what the solver looks like as it runs. If you've used Elastina software before, this should look very familiar. Once you see normal termination, now we are ready to post-process our result. With the job finished, it's safe to close or minimize the Job Manager. The Job Status bar should also be a solid green to show the job is 100% complete. For post-processing, we'll begin by navigating to the top Analysis tab. The program will automatically load the corresponding result file. If for some reason the file doesn't load automatically, you can always load the result or other results by using the top left four squares, selecting Open, and then loading the d3plot file. As the program is running, you can also use this method and select Update Results from the same menu to check on your simulation status. If we hit the Play icon, we can easily see the animation of our deformation in the display window. Using the red button, we can quickly record, outputting the whole animation using our current view as AVI, MP4, or a series of PNGs. By hitting the square stop button, we can deselect all the frames of our animation, then reselect our last frame, and now we're ready to investigate the formability of our final part shape. By selecting the FLD option under Formability group, 
Ansys Form takes the strain profile, including where your part may be at risk of cracks and wrinkles. By selecting the Thinning option under Formability Group, we can see the thinning percentage and actual thickness throughout the part. After selecting thickness, we can use contour setting to adjust our values and color profiles. For example, using reverse colors and adjusting the lower profile to gray, in addition to adjusting our min and max values to user-defined values of 0.65 and 0.8, we can now easily observe sections of our part outside of our range. For this part, we observe a hot spot of thickening and some minor thinning locations. Some other features of ANSYS form include these top tab subjects of spring back and surface quality curvature, but these will be left for a more advanced tutorial. That should be everything you need to know to get started with ANSYS form. If you're interested in testing and trialing ANSYS forming, contact us at our website, www.formingsimulation.com. We look forward to hearing from you and helping you reach high tech.